Hey everyone, it's Nephis here, and I'll take you through some quick tips in no particular order for leveling new characters, especially if you're making a new alt character on the sign, or even if you're starting ESO as a new player, some of these tips may help you efficiently level and flesh out your character's progression, even without a double XP event going on, as many of you I wager are leveling the new class Arcanus. There's also a wonderful written guide by one of our ESO moderators, Fixed Basilisk, that you can also check out if you don't want to watch the video on how to efficiently level your old character. First tip, if you want some free XP and you intend the character to do daily crafting writs later on, it may be helpful to approach the NPCs Danel, Teleno, and Milaneth at your faction starting town's Fighters Guild and Mages Guild locations to get certified for writs. You can also, after you hit level 6, go to Alanor in Somerset and approach Valerian who stands outside of the Alanor crafting area for jewelry crafting certification. Fun fact, if your new character already has maxed their crafting skill lines to level 50 before you talk to these NPCs, you actually have the dialogue option of skipping their tutorials and getting certified immediately. Which leads us to tip number 2. If you have champion points on a different character, you can actually use them on your new character no matter the level. So, while deconstructing intricates and high-level enchanting purple glyphs made by your friends or your other characters can exponentially help level your alt character's crafting skill lines, you should also make sure to have 45 champion points invested into the inspiration boost passive if this is an alt character. Or, if you're frustrated with the lack of speed on your new character's mount, you can also use the green champion points to speed the mount up, if you have enough. Tip number 3, join the Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, and Undaunted as soon as possible in your faction starting town. It's okay if you forget to pick up the Mages Guild and you've already picked up some lore books already as they count retroactively once you join the Mages Guild. However, XP that counts towards the Fighters Guild does not count retroactively if you've killed a bunch of undead and werewolves already. You can join the Sigic Guild immediately as well as a new character by pouring to Shimmerine in Somerset and finishing the initial Augur Sigic quest after the quest with Razum Dar. As for joining the Undaunted, you can actually just get to the outside entrance of the starter dungeon they want you to explore. You don't actually have to go into the dungeon or do the dungeon. For tip number 4, if you need skill points fast and you don't want to deal with hunting down sky shards, you can go to each base game's public dungeon or bo both public dungeons in DLC zones to get a skill point each after killing the group event boss of the public dungeon. Eventually, you should also do dungeons on normal to also get skill points after completing each dungeon quest. This also helps you with your undaunted XP gain. If you want to maximize your Undaunted XP gain, I suggest you do it later with the veteran hard modes of the base game dungeons, as they're fairly easy even for newer players, or once you hit level 45 or 50, you can do Undaunted Pledges on Veteran for more Undaunted XP gain. For tip number 5, if you want to level your character or your fighter's guild fast, and you don't want to bother with specialized grinding areas like Spellscar and Craglorn, Skyrish Catacombs and Craglorn, or the Black Rose Prison grind, you can go to the Alakir Desert and join the eternally running Dolmen trains with XP buffs. You'll most likely get picked up by a group if you ask in zone chat. For number 6, if all of this sounds extremely exhausting and tedious to you because you have to travel around so much, I would highly recommend joining any large guild and traveling to people from the guild roster or asking for ports. Most ESO players are pretty cool and will help you out with this especially if you need teleports to specific lore books or sky shards. Tip number 7, once you hit level 10, you're free to join a PvP campaign and talk to the PvP tutorial NPCs, or you can skip the tutorial by talking to your faction's Grand Warlord NPC to unlock the Alliance War skill line. With this, you get a healing ability that uses stamina, and you can make your way to Alliance War level 3 to unlock the continuous attack passive that grants your mount even more speed. Tip number 8, if you have the gold, make sure to buy bank space for your new character as it will help a lot with inventory management. You can also purchase bank space for all your characters if you haven't done so already through the banker. Tip number 9, if you don't want to deal with a lot of this and you just want to skip straight to level 50, a really fast but pricey way to do this is to use master rits and turn them in with an XP buff up 
If you're on PC, a really easy way to streamline this Master Writ XP grind is to use the Writ Worthy add-on and queue up all the Master Writs to turn in after crafting entire queues of consumables. And I say consumables because for a new character, you don't have motifs or provisioning recipes learned, which means you have to go with Alchemy and Enchanting Master Writs. Tip number 10. Perhaps most important is that when you're killing things or turning quests, make sure to be on the bar with the skills you want to level up, especially if you have bar swap unlocked after level 15, and you're bar swapping between two different skill bars. XP only counts towards skills and their skill lines on your character's active bar at the time of the XP being earned or the quest being turned in. Tip number 11. For this tip, if you're going to grind with kills, Make sure to craft a set of Heartland Conqueror with the training traits combined with a damage set. You can ask for help in the guild you're in if you don't know how to craft or can't yet craft item sets. And that's really it. If I missed anything you think should have been in the video, definitely post down in the comments below. I will say probably one of the biggest helpful things I've mentioned here is joining a large guild or several large guilds because it does help with also getting um, exploration XP from discovering way shrines. Uh, moving around on your slow mount is really tedious and boring. And for Mage's Guild, if you're not gonna, you know, have a hard time, you should definitely have a uh, membership in a, a large guild at, at least to port around or ask for ports for those lore books. And I would highly advise if you are really tempted to buy from the crown store, assuming you are on an alt character, um, these skill lines like for fi Fighters Guild or whatever, I would say avoid buying the Mage's Guild skill line uh, because it doesn't actually give you the lore book knowledge that you actually need to use one of the mythics in the game called Mora's Whispers. And that's really it. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for listening. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe, have fun, and see you guys next time.